Okay, welcome to uh, chapter three, section three. Um, we're going to continue from the last section uh, where we updated our app on Heroku and and um, did some database troubleshooting. Now I want to uh, create a controller. I want to show you how to create a controller and um, maybe some views. And I have my server running. I have my page up, my local page and I have my directory open. Now if we go in the app directory this is where we're gonna have our content generated we're gonna have we're gonna generate a post controller for our blog okay so we did the home controller and for every controller there's usually a view uh, it's very important that you understand this structure so we have a home controller if we go in our views we have a home folder and then in there we'll have our index view okay and for the home for the home control this is all we need we're gonna have because there's only one home page um, our posts view we'll have a lot of post views we'll have the add post view um, just the, the regular display view um, we'll have a, a posts uh, a list of all our posts for a view so now let's, let's go into the command line and make sure you're in this directory make sure you're in the site slash my ruby blog directory or you're not going to be able to do anything in rails okay so now what we want to do is use the generate command okay but we can also just use rails g um, which is short for generate so you can do that if you want so i am going to generate a controller called posts now this has to be plural controllers should always be plural models however should be singular so we'll have the post model with the posts controller and you can see you can go and you can see that it created our post controller and it also created some tests if we want to run tests on the controller um, so now if we go over to the app folder and we go in controllers, you'll see it created a post controller dot Ruby file. So this, if we open this, there shouldn't be anything really in it um, aside from the class. So we went over classes and objects in chapter two when we went over the Ruby programming language. And this is just a class called post controller um, and it's very conventional you need to have a capital P uh, this is actually called camel case okay um, if we had it like this like some programs do uh, that would be snake case so we want to keep the generated name and this if you remember just means that it's inheriting from another class so this controller is an inheriting everything from application controller which is comes with rails by default which has um, different methods and properties that we can use in our post controller All right. now the way we're doing things here um, isn't the quickest and easiest way but I'm doing it for the sake of learning because um, you can actually generate a controller and a model and a view at the same time um, if you wanted to you could also use what's called scaffolding which will actually create everything for you including the database tables and and pretty much everything and I'm gonna go over scaffolding in a future section in a future chapter but I just I didn't want to use just that as the way we create our blog so just so you could learn uh, just so you can learn more um, but what we will go over scaffolding and what we'll do is probably have another side project um, not really a project but just like a, uh, a another app just to show you how scaffolding and, and some other techniques because um, sometimes you can't do both in the same project and I should mention it if you don't already know that this is pure Ruby code okay this is this isn't any kind of HTML or, or any other kind of programming it's strict strictly Ruby the view files have HTML in them but the controllers will have uh, generally will just have Ruby code 
So in the controller, we want to create an action or multiple actions. And an action is just a method. Um, like we went over in, in chapter two, uh, a class, an object class can have methods. It can have properties that we define as well as methods. So there's seven actions in Rails. Um, the index action is basically like the root action where it'll display um, like it'll display all our posts for us so just by defining the index action we'll be able to use it so we want to do def and then index and then end so we declared our, our action Is this right it should be spaced out so we have an index action inside our post controller and there's other actions like um, edit which would be when we edit a post show I think show is is when we're looking at just one post um, there's new create destroy uh, those are all actions for for our controllers that we can use so the next thing to do would be to create a view because our, our post controller has no views if we go to my Ruby blog and then to app and then views what it did do is generate a posts um, folder for the for the controller so if you generate any kind of controller it's going to create a folder with that name just like we created the home controller so you can generate views at the same time as you generate a controller um, I guess I should show you what that would look like. So we could do like Rails G for generate um, controller posts, and we could have said uh, new, and then you can add as many as you want with a space. We could add an edit controller, um, sorry, view, um, and, and so on. But we didn't do that. So all the other way we can do it is just go in the post folder and create a new file. So we'll say a new text document, and we're going to name that index.html.erb. So all the all your view files will have this extension. They'll have the HTML with erb tacked on to the end of it. And erb just stands for embedded Ruby. So let's open up the index view. Remember, it's the index. Oh, let me change my extension. By default, it's opening in, in regular Notepad, but I want to have it open in Notepad++. All right, so we're in our, our view file. Remember, this is the index view of the post controller. And in the view files, we'd have HTML. Uh, we can embed JavaScript and CSS. And we can also use blocks of Ruby code, which will generally will come from the controller or the, the controller will get it from the model and then pass it to this view so for now let's just uh, make an h1 tag and just say blog posts so that's pure HTML it's a simple heading um, and let's create a paragraph um, Actually, let's just simulate a blog a little bit. We'll say uh, sample post one, and that'll be in an H3 tag. And then all right. And let's actually create one more. We'll do an HR here. Obviously, this content, when we're done, the title and text, it's obviously uh, going to be dynamic um, coming in from the database. But I'm just doing this just so we can see what it looks like. All right, so let's save that. So in order to use the seven routes that I that I explained earlier, the index, new, um, well, let me get out of here, 
uh, create, destroy. We need to create a resource. We need to create a route for our post controller. So go into your my Ruby blog directory and go into config and then routes. So in order for us to use the URL structure to go to slash post um, slash post edit show to use those seven uh, actions that I talked about earlier, we need to claim our resource. So we would just want to go and type in resources resources and then a colon and then posts and then just save that file and exit so now let's start restart the server by going to the command line where the server is running and press control C and then just start it again with rails s and then you should be able to go to our page and you should be able to go to slash posts and there it is there's our the view the index view of the post controller which we created here so the next step would be to go and create a model and actually make this content dynamic as opposed to just um, static text.